My name is Patricia Rasmussen. I was born prematurely and I was put in the incubator and the oxygen damaged the retina in my eyes. I could see a little tiny bit out of my right eye and a little bit more out of my left. But then when I was 16, the retina detached and I've been totally blind ever since then. I grew up in California. I was born in Northern California in Stockton. Um, and my parents moved to Southern California when I was three. So it's pretty much all I ever knew. Um, I was married for 20 years. My husband unfortunately passed away and I have two kids, two grandkids. I didn't really realized there was a difference until I got a little older. When I started school, they tried to have me, they didn't know where to put me because my vision was so poor. So they tried a home teacher that didn't work out so well. And so then I had to, finally my mom found a school for the visually impaired in Long Beach, California. So I went there for two years, first and second grade, and then uh, transferred to a school in Whittier and finished third through ninth grade in that in that those schools, the Whittier schools, and then went to high school at my regular high school that was Downey High School. And I, by then I didn't really need a resource teacher. I could and resource teachers are people who normally you're in the classroom with the rest of the kids, so you're mainstreamed. But if to get extra help, like with braille, learning braille and things like that. That's when I would go to the resource room and the braille teacher, the resource teacher would teach me braille. Um, I use braille every day pretty much because I have all my phone numbers on three by five cards in braille. And, and then I have a, what's called a braille note. It's an electronic braille device. You can write and read. And it does a lot of other things. It's a pretty um, fancy little gadget and they're not cheap, they're about $6,000, but I have a straight up braille writer, it's just a mechanical kind of thing, and it's real heavy. As a little kid in first grade and beyond, I'd carry a braille writer around with me because they didn't have those electronic devices in those days, so. But I'm an avid fan of braille, because I have to keep my phone numbers, you know, and things like that. That's my means of communication, is braille. First of all, I lost a little bit of vision I had when I was between my uh, freshman and sophomore year of high school. So I was a mess. I didn't want to use a cane and have anybody think I was blind, although I was. So I wouldn't use a cane and I'd fall sometimes, you know. I took cane, learning how to use a cane and uh, in the summers, I'd go to the Braille Institute in Los Angeles and learn there. But would I use it in front of my friends? No. I'd rather run into a pole or fall in a ditch or whatever, you know? And then I used the cane from in my freshman and sophomore years of college. And then after that, I got a dog. Well, when I could see, I couldn't see that well. I couldn't see faces that well. So, you know, all I know is being visually impaired my entire life, even though, you know, I went from having a little bit of vision to having no vision. And so, you know, I don't really, honestly, I don't care what people look like. Although when I, you know, when I was dating and things, I'd ask somebody if what the person looked like. I mean, you always kind of want to know, but it's not the same as for somebody who's not visually impaired. I don't think, you know, it's a little different. Sometimes when I'm walking or something, people will say hi to me or ask, you know, if they can help me with this or that. And, and those are kind things, and I take it as such. Or they'll say my dog is beautiful, or things like that. And, um, you know, I don't, I just think a kind heart is a thing of beauty to me. You would look at a movie star and say that's a pretty person, or whatever. Or I never could see well enough to know that or do that. So I listen to the voice more, I suppose just get a, a concept of the person, their inside beauty instead of more the outward appearance. When somebody walks in a room, that's what you see, is their outward appearance. You don't really know them at that point. And it's probably just because of that, that that's the first way you perceive them is, you know, 
their outward appearance. But I'm sure, you know, if you met somebody who was gorgeous and just not the nicest person in the world, you wouldn't like them either. And I'm sure if you had a relationship with someone and you saw them and then you had the same relationship with someone over the phone and never saw them, your perspective might be totally different. But it's hard for me to judge because that's, I can only judge on my own experiences, you know. Um, it would be nice if people could, well, also, okay, let's, what if they took all of you guys and blindfolded you and you met people for the first time and then got to know them a little bit and then took the blindfolds off? That might be a fun experience yeah. for you guys. But I don't know, that's just how society is and I can't really change that. I'm, it's not necessarily the best way, but that's, that's how it is. Um, I just appreciate you guys interviewing me. This is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been it's fun it's meeting you guys. You have, all have this youth and exuberant behavior kind of thing going on, so it's really fun for me too. So thank you. Plus nobody calls me ma'am, but you guys. <laughs>